Right, Mr. Palmer here. First video, I think it's looking like seven or eight now for buying trees. Um, so let's kick it off basically. So the big question is what is a tree? Uh, looking at the data structure and then what are the advantages of using a tree? So a tree basically, we're talking about nonlinear data structure, it's hierarchical where uh, every node um, has a pointer and they point to two or more child nodes, okay? Along with the actual data structure itself, we have a pointer that points to the root node of that data structure. That sounds a bit like uh, linked lists, if you remember uh, previously. The other advantage, uh, the other thing to remember with um, uh, binary, uh, with trees, basically, is they're stored non-contiguously in memory, and therefore we're here, we're dealing with a dynamic data structure, and the size of that data structure can change to the requirements of our program uh, and keep adapting as necessary. Okay, so remember when we're talking about data structures, it's not your typical tree you need to turn that frown upside down. All right, and we're talking about a tree structure that looks a bit like that. Now, the terminology that you need to get used to basically is this. So the first thing is the root node. Remember, we have a pointer that's stored along with our actual um, uh, data structure, and that's going to point at that root node. So then once we know where that root node is, we can basically start to follow the pointers that that root node has to other nodes. Uh, they are children nodes, child nodes um, of, you know, the previous layer, okay, or the, the node in the previous layer. So uh, a layer is like one level in the hierarchy of a tree. We'll be looking at layers uh, later on when we're talking about traversal of a tree. Uh, as we follow those pointers down a branch, okay, we eventually end up at leaf nodes. Um, the branches are lighting up blue and purple there. Uh, we know we've hit a leaf node because any pointers uh, associated with a leaf node are going to be null because they don't point to anything else. So therefore, we know there are no further layers below that one. Now, how, why, how may we be using a tree? An example of something like this, you may want to store a bunch of related data uh, for an object, for example, in a tree. It's more common to use a tree to store um, a set of data at each node. Uh, but that uh, data is stored in the order of a key, all right? Uh, a binary tree, basically, you can see there, has only got um, two pointers from each node, and therefore there are no more than two children from every node, left and right. Uh, uh, right, now, why do we want to use a tree? If you think about doing a serial search, if I'm searching for item eight, I've got to start item one, and I've got to work my way through the whole list following each pointer along until I get to item eight. Similarly, if I want to traverse a list uh, to find a, a linked list to get the data that I'm looking for, I've got to do the same thing. I've got to start item one and work my way all the way down. Now, if I have a, um, a, a, a tree, I can basically perform a binary search on it because that data in the tree is being held in order of the key. All right. So I will start off at the root. I will compare the key that I'm looking for to the key at the node that I'm at to determine whether I've got to follow the left or the right pointer. Because if it's left, lower, I'll go left. And if it's more, I'll go right. And so therefore, basically, um, I'm getting rid of half of the data in the data set each time I do that kind of comparison to try and retrieve data. Then therefore, by using that divide and conquer approach, it's going to be very, very quick for me to retrieve data compared to that serial search. Um, if you can't remember how a binary search works, then you need to go off and look at your notes again. And then we'll be going over um, when we do the implementation of a binary tree. Uh, we'll be going over how this implementate how this um, little algorithm actually works, because uh, then you'll need to code it in class. All right. So again, uh, to show you a practical example, because you know I love Street Fighter. Um, if I want to search a binary tree, okay, my tree is stored. Uh, so I've got M Bison in the middle of there. I'm looking for Fei Long. Well, Fei Long is going to be smaller than M Bison, so I'm going to go left. All right. Compared to Darcyim, well, Phelong is greater than Darcyim, so I follow the right pointer. Darcy, uh, Phelong is greater than Honda, so I follow the right pointer. And hey, I found the the, the data for Phelong, and then I can then retrieve all the other data that I want uh, that I have stored at that node uh, for that individual record. Okay, so you should basically understand what a tree uh, data structure is. The definition was there earlier, and thinking about the advantages of it being a dynamic data structure, and also the advantages of it in terms of being used for binary searches. Okay, uh, next video coming up.